All right, guys, going to grab an F100 pickup from my buddy Chris, uh, Whiskey Dents on YouTube. Go check him out. A uh, little 64 F100. We're going to build a shop truck out of it. Let's get into it. Dude, this thing's not bad. Honestly, it's a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Between him and I, we probably have enough stuff to bag this thing in the back, at least. All right. And then I figure if I can find... Yeah, I got a four-way Yeah. I mean, a lot of this metal work is pretty easy to duplicate, too. Right? Yeah. I mean, realistically, most of it's straight. And stuff that's not, I mean, I have. So. Yeah. Tell me what you need, and I'll get the saws off. Get it yeah. We'll figure it out. Yeah, I like this thing. This thing does run pretty good, doesn't it? It's supposed to run great. I don't know. It's once it warms up. I it. Just cold-blooded, yeah. I I don't think I've ever heard a six-cylinder, so I'm not good. Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. All right, dude, I think we're going to roll. Go get some food. Beautiful. Yeah, the old Ford leaving. Figure I'll check the straps. out for lunch at 1894 in Purim. I don't know if you've ever drank at church, but it's pretty fun. So the main thing we're going to focus on today is gutting everything out of the interior. There's not really a whole lot to gut. I mean, you've got the, you know, all this crap stuck to the floor, the seat, the fuel tank, you know, some parts that I've got in here. And I watched a video uh, from Classic Car Revivals and he mentioned that if you have a 64 and earlier F100, uh, the way that the column runs through, you can't, there's not really a good way to mount it to a Crown Vic front end. He knows a lot more about these trucks than I do. I'm going to take his word for it. But at the same time, this column and wheel are so rad in this truck. So I might try and just get creative and figure something out. If I got to cut some shit up, it is what it is. But I really want to try and keep that column. But I'm not going to be upset if I can't, because like I said, he knows a lot more about these trucks than I do. So I'm going to take his word for it. Uh, if you guys want to watch him, I'll link his YouTube channel down in the below. Him down in the description below. Uh, him and Whiskey Dents. Whiskey Dents is who I actually bought this truck from. And he bought it from Classic Car Revival. So between the, the three of our channels, uh, this truck has made a couple appearances. These wheel tubs are in really nice shape. They were cut out of the box because at some point someone had a narrowed 8.8 8 in it. They're in really nice shape. But there's a chance I might not even really run a box floor in this truck. Reason being, I think I want to metal flake the shit out of this rear end once I go through it and clean it up. Metal flake the four link bars, all the air ride stuff. Paint the frame really, really nice. And then do some other cool little fab things for the air ride that I want everybody to see when you have the tonneau cover off and you're fueling up at the gas station or something like that. Uh, I would probably just leave enough box floor essentially to put like a Mustang tank in the back. And then up front, leave enough box floor to mount my compressors and my air tank, things like that for the air ride. So let me know what I should do. It's a lot more work if I actually don't run a box floor and I make everything super pretty. Again, it's a shop truck at the end of the day, but I have a really, really hard time with just doing the bare minimum. I always wanna do like the little attention to detail things so I don't know what I'm gonna do 100% yet. Um, the whole goal with this truck is I wanna, I wanna have a really nice truck, but not too nice to the point where it can't sit outside in the driveway all summer because once this thing's done, we're gonna start on another project. Probably a Model A, just depends on how money is because I'd really like to build a coupe on 32 rails and that's really not cheap. So it just depends on how my financial situation is at that time. All right, 
we got all the junk out now. I'm uh, going to focus on pulling the seat out. There is two bolts in the back, two in the front on each side, so eight bolts total. Shadow found her little perch. I tried putting her to work, but she just was not at all interested. I uh, got tired pretty quick. I'm tired of this, Grandpa. That's too damn bad! You're in my world now, Grandma. All right, the seat is out of it. I'm gonna leave it right here for now. Uh, it's the perfect spot because I'm gonna trip over it about 87 times. I'm gonna get pissed. I'm gonna throw it right in the woods. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all this junk out of here, uh, pull the mats out of here, and we'll sweep the floors. We'll see how rough it is, but I have a feeling this thing's a lot rougher than I thought. Found a stick. Found a squeegee. I found an antenna to a vehicle that's not this one. Uh, pleasantly surprised with most of the floors. However, this stuff here concerns me. So this, I assume, would be replaced with a floor pan. No big deal because we got some rot here anyways. So I would probably just buy this whole chunk. Uh, this stuff back here, I'm probably going to have to replace because you can see the frame there. Uh, I don't know if that is taken care of by, or a lot of that is taken care of by replacing like inner cab corners. Again, I don't really know these trucks all that well. I uh, kind of tweaked this when I pulled the seat out, which isn't really a big deal. It's just someone screwed a bunch of shit there. They kind of did a decent job keeping the radius and whatnot, but it's a little rough. Uh, this stuff here, I already knew about all that. This here is all super rough. I don't know if you can see it, if it's too dark. And hold on here, I'm gonna get my light out. All right, there we go. So this is, looks like someone patched this before. Didn't do the best job, but uh, either way it's been patched. So we're gonna need, need an entire driver's side floor pan. What really sucks <laughs> is I didn't know that this transmission hump unbolted. So when Jake and I pulled the engine out of this thing, we just cut it up because we pulled the engine and tranny together. So that sucks. Um, I'll have to buy a new, a new chunk there, which isn't really the end of the world. So over here, you can see in this door jam a little better. Uh, the other side is just as rough. They do make a repop for all this stuff. All of this is pretty decent. We do have a little bit of rot starting in here, not quite as bad as the other side, but we'll still have to rebuild that. Uh, this whole chunk they make, uh, we could probably rebuild this. I am not so certain I can rebuild that, so we'd probably just buy this whole chunk. Uh, I think it comes as one piece anyways. You can see where someone replaced floor pans here too, just with flat steel. Honestly, I think, 
I would just buy an entire uh, passenger and driver section. I think a lot of this stuff I can rebuild. So yeah, a lot of it isn't as bad as I thought, except for in these back corners. I don't know if they make that stuff repop. Uh, if they don't, that's gonna suck. So I guess we'll see. Got a pretty decent haul today. Uh, that Crown Vic front end and this 8.8. Uh, 8.8 is out of a late 90s Ford Ranger with a 4.0. Uh, it's a 327 gear. And it's like an inch and a half narrower than the 9 inch, which isn't really that big of a deal. We can make that up in wheel offset. Uh, that Crown Vic front, it's missing some stuff. But again, everything back here was 200 bucks. How can you not? So I have the cradle. I've got the upper arms, the lower arms. I've got one spindle. And I'm going to have to order another spindle. I'm going to have to order uh, hubs, brake stuff, things like that. Which, even if I bought a complete Crown Vic front, I'm still going to replace all that stuff anyways, just so it's all new. And I already ordered a rack for it, so waiting on that, and I'm waiting on the brackets to get that into the truck. All right, we got the old rear end out of it. This guy, we got it all wire wheeled up. I'll probably put the floor jack under it, try and get it kind of centered under the truck. Start mocking up some four link stuff. I do have it marked. So here is our center line. So we'll find center on the axle tube. Uh, once we get it in here, have the pinning angle kind of set. I don't know exactly our width yet, but we'll just measure from leaf spring pad to leaf spring pad, or I'm sorry, leaf spring pad to frame on that one. And as long as it's the same on both sides, we should be good. centered where it has to go it's dead on with all my old markings our pinning angle is set and i'm pretty proud of myself because that whole time lapse that you just saw was 12 minutes worth of footage hey gilmore you suck you jackass why don't you shut the hell up that was from getting it on the jack dragging it over putting it on jack stands getting it centered where it has to go and getting our pinning angle set so you may not find it very impressive but i'm pretty proud of that so what we're going to do now, we're going to take our lower four link bars. We are going to bolt them into the old leaf spring hangers, which is actually really slick that the bars are the perfect length to do that. And then we're going to go ahead and tack this guy onto the rear end on both sides. So let's get to that. Oh, uh, I need to drill out the holes for the shackles too. Uh, it takes a five ace bolt. This whole deal does. Takes a 5 ace bolt, uh, I would obviously much rather drill it out to fit versus having it be, you know, too big of a hole. And another reason why I wanted to go with an 8 8 5 by 4 and a half bolt pattern that's going to match our Crown Victoria front end is going to give us a lot more wheel options as well. Uh, I just didn't want to have 5 by 5 and a half in the back, 5 by 4 and a half up front. Of course I didn't get long enough bolts. Why would I do that? Well, can use our old bolt to at least mock it in for now. No big deal. And I think I'm just gonna kind of get it mounted right underneath our leaf spring perch. Just so it's the same on both sides. And it kind of just minimizes welding too, so. We'll obviously put the angle finder on it, make sure it's, you know, zeroed out. I was wondering why my hands were getting hot. 
God, I just realized I'm not wearing welding gloves. That's dumb. Should probably do that. So I got the backside uh, tacked in, got like a half inch tack on it. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, throw a couple in the corners of the front here as well. And then I'll move on to that other side. I'm not gonna film myself doing the other side. You guys already watched me do this. It's the same exact process. I'm not gonna bore you with it twice. I feel like it's really not all that interesting to watch a guy do it once, but it is what it is. So I got both sides tacked in. You can kind of see it down there. Uh, what I'm gonna do now, so again, if you watched the last video, you saw that the upper arms that I have were a little too short. I think I might be able to make them work on this rear end, but I'm gonna make boxing plates for in here. I'm gonna do it on both sides. Uh, the frame is kind of gnarly in here. I'm gonna clean it up. I'm gonna probably squirt some primer in there or something like that, just so it doesn't get nasty over time. Okay, so what we have here, big ass chunk of cardboard. We are gonna hold it up on the frame like that. We're gonna trace out what we need. And that's gonna be our boxing plate. We'll just go ahead and put that template over some 316 steel I got. Go ahead and start making ourselves a boxing plate. Start cutting it out. See how that looks. Not bad. I don't know how long I want to make this because I don't have the notch in it yet. And I don't want to put the notch in it until all of our floor link stuff is essentially in it. Uh, odds are it's going to have to be a little bit longer. But if I have to add a little bit of steel in there to uh, make up space between this and the notch, not the end of the world. But I just know that I have to have a boxing plate in here in order to start on the upper bars. So kind of at a... Kind of between a rock and a hard place. Is it the right thing to do? Probably not. Are we gonna do it anyways? Yup. And essentially this should be the same on both sides. I'm not 100%. Hi Shadow, what are you doing? Not 100% on that. So it be trimmed a little bit more here. But in a perfect world, it should be. Uh, we'll go ahead and just get started on this side. And then if this works on that side, great. If not, we'll make another one. But this frame is just kind of wonky, so I don't really trust anything on it anyways. Well, I'm going to have to go get some more sheet steel because I am pert near out. I'm going to go ahead and cut this out with the grinder and the cutoff wheel. Uh, we'll put it in place, make sure that it works. We're going to clean out that frame rail, prime it, and then I'm going to go ahead and start tacking it in. All right, I just got done cleaning it up with this. I'm going to squirt some primer in here. Just to kind of try and neutralize anything that's there. This side wasn't really that bad. This side's super bad. Um, it feels really, it feels kind of weak too, so a boxing plate is... Definitely gonna be needed right here. Okay, well, I kind of got a little ahead of myself and forgot to start filming. It's not the prettiest, but uh, it'll work. It's all getting ground down smooth anyways uh, when I paint the frame, so not the end of the world. It's definitely on there though. The bottom is pretty gnarly. I'm not even gonna show you that because there was some pretty big gaps I had to fill. But either way, uh, it's coming together. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'm not a welder. <laughs> I'm not a fabricator. Um, I can make shit hold. Is it gonna win a trophy? No, not even close. 
I made a center point on my rear end here and here. Uh, camera angle doesn't really make it look like a center point. There it does. Uh, we're going to get as close to those as we can because these bars are a little long. And we'll come into these boxing plates on each side and tack it in there. Okay, so here's our upper bar. What I'm thinking is we'll get this as close to the center. Honestly, we could probably put this on our center line right here. And that actually lines up really, really slick with the top here. We can butt this right up to this weld on the boxing plate. And then I still have enough room here on the back side to get a nut on this bolt. We might tack this in right here exactly how it is. And then we can get working on the other side. I think this here is going to kind of fuck us a little bit, uh, the ears on this. So there was some kind of a sensor that I pulled out of here. But either way, uh, we can fill that hole somehow. And we can cut these ears off because when this thing wants to go up and down, it's going to hit right here like right away. So we'll get this one tacked on. We'll at least get this ear cut off. And then we can tack the upper bar mount up here. All right, so we got the passenger side tacked in. Uh, I like how it's laid out, so I'm going to play around with the driver's side here quick, see if I can't get away with leaving this uh, this tab on here. Uh, if not, I'm going to cut it off, get it mocked in there, and get that tacked in on this side. All right, so the upper bars are in. I ended up having to flux core these on just because we were going on to a cast rear end housing, and it's ugly, but it works. And I know I'm gonna get ripped apart for welding to cast. I have a buddy that's done it a bunch of times. He told me how to do it. I actually, I added some heat in there and I converted my welder over to flux and I burned it in as slow as I could. It's ugly, but it's really strong, so it shouldn't go anywhere. Uh, the flux wire has a little bit of nickel content in it and that helps with penetration to cast. So I'm gonna try it. He looked at it, said good to go, send it. So what we're gonna do next, uh, we're gonna start on our frame notch. So the frame has this guy here on it that kind of protrudes out on the bottom. Uh, I'm gonna cut that off so that I can get my notch to seat right in here. I already cut this side off and I'll, I still have to cut it up, you know, blend it out with a blending wheel and whatnot. So I'm gonna cut that out and then we're gonna start getting the frame notch in place. All right, so I have my first plate on for the notch and I have it, as soon as it stops going wonky, have it zeroed out and a little bit of overhang on the bottom. So I'm gonna tack this in quick and then I'm gonna take my grinder and I'm just gonna slice the top of the frame here just so it's easier to cut this frame out when I have this all in here and weld it out because then all I gotta do is just buzz off the sides, buzz the bottoms off, and good to go. I've got material in the back of my truck, we'll make our bridge. So first off, I'm gonna get tacked up on this, go on to the other side, and then we'll work on to the passenger side. All right, so we got both sides of our C-notch. Uh, we got it burned in on the sides and on the insides. Uh, we, we're gonna have to plate all this up here cut this part of the frame out, plate the inside then. And here's my measurements just to make sure that everything was gonna be dead set. I zeroed this out since the frame is zeroed out at level. So next step, we're gonna go ahead and just burn our sides in and start cutting the frame up. Got Mitch on the welder this time. Looks good. Could go a little slower on the yeah. next side. 
You know, I don't think you have quite as much of a gap over there though either. No, I, I had a I little bit more of a gap to fill on this side. I had to stop a couple times, but no big deal. All right, so we've got our notch in. Uh, it's all capped and everything aside from on the insides here. Uh, I'll do that once I cut the frame out. Now I did get new wheels. These are US wheel. Uh, it's their classic rat rod wheel, I think they call it. Uh, these are a 16 by eight. And then I've got 16 by sevens for the front. And we've got our baby moon cap. So I'm gonna paint these. These are gonna go like a metal flake teal. We're gonna play around with some Ed Roth paint, which is all out of an aerosol can. So we're gonna paint one wheel just to see how it looks. Uh, we'll put it on the truck with the baby moon cap. If we don't like it, we could change the color, of course. This is expensive paint, so I don't really wanna waste it by painting all these wheels if I don't like it, because then I wasted it all when I could use it for something else. Yeah, I hate it. So, I mean, it's not a horrible color. It's just not at all what I'm going for. I'm kind of starting to question the whole thing though. And I'm almost wondering if maybe I just do it simple, just go black or white or cream, or I could even do the same color that I'm gonna paint the truck and do my chrome baby moon and a chrome beauty ring or something like that. So here's what these wheels look like with the baby moon. So I'm gonna put it on the truck See what you guys think. All right, so that's a wheel on the truck and I like it. I think I made the right choice in wheels. It was between that or even going with like a 20 inch Detroit steel, but I think that's just a little too big for what I want. I mean, I want it to be like a 60s shop truck aside from the fact that it's gonna be on air ride. I cut the frame out with Mitch yesterday. So we've got the rear end tucked up in there and our pumpkin and four link bars sit a little bit higher than the notch. So I think what I'm gonna do, uh, I was picking another buddy's brain about it uh, because I was gonna run a front bar and a rear bar for my bridge, but the front bar would obviously hit unless we took a lot of low out of this thing, which we don't wanna do because we wanna lay frame. So I'm gonna run a bridge on the back. Also, I have decided on white for the wheels and I dig it. And I was really nervous because this is a fairly narrow rear end, at least a lot narrower than what this truck came with. But with these wide wheels, once you get a tire on it and get the brake hardware on, I think it's gonna be dead on. Uh, I was nervous they were gonna be sucked in a little too far, but I think it's gonna work out perfect. All right, so here's the material that we're gonna use for our bridge. I gotta cut it down to 29 and a half inches so that it fits between the notch. So I'm gonna do that and start welding it in. So our bridge is in. Uh, I ran over to Josh's, grabbed some just rollers that he had that had tires on them. Got the truck on the ground. I have the frame up on jack stands. So this is actually probably gonna be pretty much our ride height in the back. And here's the bag brackets that we're gonna use. So these are gonna weld on on the underside of the axle like that. Obviously this bar is in the way. And I believe this is for our spare tire mount. So we're gonna cut this out and cut this out. So that'll give us some room. We'll weld our bag brackets onto the rear end. And then these guys right here are gonna weld on to here. So I'm gonna notch these so that they'll kind of fit around this bar right here. And then any kind of excess hanging off the bottom, we'll, we'll trim it so that it looks nice. All right, never mind. Change your plans on the air ride. So this is the issue I'm running into. I can't get a bracket to fit in here nice uh, because this, pin, this diff is so offset. So those behind the axle brackets, if I even put it right up to here, we're gonna hit the notch, which we don't want. We are just gonna run axle over bag 
on the outside. Now here's the problem, and I looked at my other wheels before I did this. The other wheels have more offset to them, or more backspace. So once you get a tire on it, it's really close, but once you get brake hardware, and if I have to run like a quarter inch spacer, I can. Uh, it's still probably gonna be about the same distance as here on this wheel and tire. So I might trim like an inch off here on the top, just so I can suck all this in just a little bit more. So I'm gonna try that and then I'm gonna drop the frame down to where the notch meets the top of the bag bracket and then the bag bracket's gonna weld on here and then if there's any overhang then, you know, I'll trim it up, make it look a little better. All right, so I got that upper bag bracket cut down. That's essentially exactly how it's gonna sit. Just like that. I cut an inch off, so it sucked it in quite a bit. I'll do it on the other side too. But I'm going to start tacking this in actually right now. All right. Upper bag bracket is tacked on. I'm going to lift this thing up, uh, pull the bag out because I have a bolt in the middle of the bag. And with where it's at, it'll never go in or out. So I'm going to have to find some washers or spacers or something so that I can utilize these outside threads on the bag so that I can pull the bag in and out if I ever have to, if I ever blow a bag or something like that before I worry about the bottoms. So do that real quick. All right, got our second bag bracket marked. Gonna cut an inch off and then we'll start on the other side, get this one tacked in and then we're gonna start on the bottoms while those are the axle tubes. At least get everything tacked in, get the bags bolted in and go from there. I paid for the whole cutoff wheel and by God, I'm gonna use the whole damn cutoff wheel. So I've got glorified tacks on the uppers, uh, mainly because I'm running out of welding gas. So I'm just gonna get it strong enough to where I can get it to go up and down. And also I was talking to Josh, he had a good idea. Uh, I actually welded a bolt on the center on the uh, axle bracket. So I'll just thread the, thread the bag right onto that. And then I'll bolt it on the top. So I'm gonna put the bags back in it quick and I'm gonna go ahead and lower this thing all the way down so the bags are totally compressed and I'm gonna start welding these onto the axle. And then we're gonna go ahead and see if I can find some fittings and make this thing go up and down. So I'll show you what I got going on here. Uh, we've got push lock fittings on each bag going into this guy here. And I already played with it to make sure it works so I don't look like an idiot on camera. We're gonna hook it up to the air compressor, raise it up and lower it down. Show you guys how it works.
These are, this is three eighths line too. So it comes down kind of fast. All right, so we should definitely be low because the leaf spring perches hit before anything. And the wheels and tires that I'm gonna run on this are of course quite a bit taller than these. And I think it'll be dead on. I think the box sides should touch the ground, which in theory should make the rockers touch the ground once we get the front end done. I dig it. I mean, of course, there's a lot more work to do back here. I still need to box in the insides of the C-notch. I need to finish weld everything. I need to clean all this stuff up. I need to finish boxing the front of the frame. I might box the rear of the frame as well. I need to finish fully welding out my forelink and I need to paint the rear of the frame, paint the rear end, pull the rear end out, finish weld everything on that. So there is a lot of work, but at least we know everything jives with the forelink and it goes up and down. So I'll call it a win. All right, so that's what we have done on the truck so far. That's just a compilation video of everything that we've done on it. If you wanna see more of that truck, make sure that you like and subscribe because we're gonna get going on it again. We'll catch you on the next one.